a lot of what interests me about art is that it affords a process of, of knowing, of learning to know, of learning to come to understand something about the universe, how it works, how we experience it with others. And I think art and technology have been tightly coupled for as long as there's been art. The idea that engineering and art are kind of different disciplines is a fairly modern corruption. And uh, so I wouldn't so much say that my work needs art or that art needs engineering, but that in fact these are just two faces of the same thing. I think art and engineering have a special connection uh, in the way that both fields focus on design and making. Because people think that engineering is science and art is made up and that these are very different things. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of engineering is made up and a lot of art is based in good science. Where art is a lot more creative focused, engineering is a lot more detail oriented and um, logically focused, the proper combination uh, of the two is what helps like make something that you know is like very like interesting or something that's uh, spectacular. This LED matrix, each LED has a light sensor mm -hmm. and a small uh, circuit, which is just a transistor and some resistor. Each one is independent. It doesn't have any communication with the other ones other than through the light. And so what's interesting about that is that um, this, this flocking behavior is sort of an emergent uh, property of the physical light reflecting in the glass and, and in space. It's interactive. That aspect also is going to make it uh, an, an organic part of the building. Observing the environment and continually reacting to it. I can see that I've had some sort of effect and that connects me to this thing and it reminds me of my my place in the world, my body in the world, but it's, it's also listening so much to itself. Each little sensor is listening to its neighbor as much to me that even after a while of me being pretty certain about my influence, doubt creeps in again. Is this thing listening to itself or is it listening to me? You have these waves of activity, but they're not totally uniform. Uh, and, and you can think about, well, why aren't they totally uniform? You know, can I actually throw a rock in this water and, and see ripples that I can verify that I've caused? It's very different having all these um, sensors interact with each other and, and uh, is very different than having a single control brain that controls the whole thing. And uh, you know, all these things are interesting things to think about and also things that students will think about. In a way, it humanizes all, all the circuitry and stuff because, you know, typically people think of, think of, you know, industrial applications and then less so, you know, things that are, things that are cool to look at, things that, things that you could really Put in your own house. I'd love to have a, you know, I'd love to at least have a table of these guys to, to play with. So, ooh, yeah. Yeah, you can you can kind of squeeze things around, which is which is neat. Um, it wants to be active. It's kind it's kind of mesmerizing just the the different the different um, reactions that you can do. I mean, for example, you, you take this thing off and it reacts very differently because there's, you know, it, 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 all of a sudden things are less connected with each other because it needs the class to see, to really see its neighbors. And I think it's reacting to the, the you know, this really bright directional light source too. It wants to be active, right? So uh, as you begin to restrict the number of places it can light up, it'll find a path over to, yep, there we are. It goes over there again to be active. Yeah. The idea that you can take a few simple elements and uh, connect those elements with simple rules, simple laws uh, to generate emergent phenomena is a really attractive idea. And it's an idea that lies at the heart of many disciplines of science. Well, one of the things that uh, excites me very much about this is uh, the simplicity of the circuit and still it being so interesting. Unlike um, some of the similar pieces that are controlled by a microcontroller, um, in this piece, uh, each uh, cell that has, uh, that has uh, light and a detector, a light source and a detector, it interacts with its neighbors. And yet, uh, beautiful patterns can emerge. It works as an art project uh, to uh, stand in for the sorts of great things we can all do together uh, and I, I like the broad philosophical statement it makes. This shows how 
everything and everyone is connected. A lot of small actors doing the right things all at once can have a big impact on the scene. Um, and so I hope people contemplating art like this would would find it inspiring. Yeah, so so it looks like over here it still wants to do what it was doing before, where we have something starting over here and then it comes across. But then that's starting to, you know, get some interference in the middle over here. Scott, you know, kind of coined this term as the shadow amplifier, which I thought was really interesting because in some sense, you know, when you when you have a shadow here, it it this device amplifies the shadows, which, you know, to me is is uh, an interesting concept too because the negative space that's created by by the piece is just almost as important as the positive space right you know you, when you when the led turns on it's almost as if it merges back into the mass you know the mass of the object and then when the led is off it looks way more complicated because you see then you see the individual circuit components well i also uh, find it uh, a little bit relaxing and hypnotic and so I, I, I hope that our students at this time of year, it's currently exam time, would find that uh, it gives them a bit of solace. It's much like we have nice plants planted around the building so people can sit out there and under the, well, in nicer weather maybe, but sit under the trees and I think that's important too. Uh, but uh, this is uh, another way I think to uh, to give students a break, give them something else to think about, and uh, yes, in the end, make them better engineers and more holistic people. So many displays of art are just there, but this is the one that is amazingly interactive in a, in a very clear way, you know. You put your hand here, and you know right away something's gonna happen, and you see what, what, what will happen. I think, I think we should get it. I don't know where, everywhere. If you stand in front of a beautiful feel with the winds blowing across, the, the patterns there are really mesmerizing and you want to understand what's happening there with the dynamics of, of the wind and the, and the particular way in which certain grass bends and that sort of thing. And I think this, this excites me the way a, a new natural phenomenon excites me, um, especially when I imagine it in a big field, uh, a larger surface. Um, it, 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 make, it makes me feel like I'm, I'd be before something I don't understand wholly, but which has its own, its own laws of some kind that are not necessarily of the artist's even design or control. It makes me excited for a chance to experience something made by human hands that's not reducing the world, that's giving more than you put into it, and kind of insisting on that, on, on, on humans being a smaller piece of the picture than sometimes we aspire to be. It's something I, I appreciate about art. I mean, my favorite works of art, the work, the art I come back to in music and painting, are the art that celebrates an excess of plenitude of so many, so many new details, new connections in the world that I'll never be able to get it. And that's a beautiful. That's beauty. I like to imagine this installed uh, at, at scale, at a big scale in a place where there's scientists and engineers around. I like to imagine two people standing in front of it, really talking it through.